I didn't want to give up. I saw my father. I'm like, there's a man like him. He should have inspired me. Why did I not let my father inspire me? He's never given up in his life. So that just kind of, when you self-realize these things, when you make your mistakes and you realize your own mistakes is when you start doing something about it. And that's exactly what happened to me. Lovely uh, seeing you across, uh, Bobby. And uh, many congratulations, 25 years in the industry. It's been 25 years since you made your debut. You're also making a debut of sorts on the digital uh, platform with Class of 83 in a never seen uh, avatar. I have never seen you play, you know, the, the role that you're playing in this one. So how, how does it feel? I'm really excited. I, I'm like really, really excited because it's been 25 years, which have passed by so fast. You don't even realize you're like, my God, 25 years, but it doesn't matter. Time is just a number. Age is just a number. <laughs> and I'm just excited that I've, uh, this is my debut on OTT platform with Netflix. Really excited because, uh, you know, as an actor, I've been looking for characters which would really get me excited as an actor to play. And uh, also because I had made up my mind, it's not just the mainstream kind of characters I would like to play. It doesn't matter if I'm the main lead of the of a script or if I am just a, a character. I was just looking for good characters to play, basically, where when you watch a film and you come out, those characters stay with you, you know, you, they always are a very important part of the narrative. So, and also uh, Red Chili's, I mean, Shah Rukh's company, Gauri, Shah Rukh and Gaurav. So this whole team together, I mean, Netflix and Red Chili's together was such an excitement for me. I still remember the first day when I met them and I, when I heard that they were doing this and they were thinking about me. I was really excited. But at the end of the day, it was always a script that mattered to me. So when I read the script, I was like, this is something I was actually looking for to play as a character, you know, something which was a strong character, which had such good shades to it, depth in him. And uh, the whole journey of the character, how he is, what he goes through, his his own pain, his, his own misery, and how he tries to fight the system and achieve what he wants. And written in a nice way, you know, in a very realistic way. Because this is a character which you can actually identify with when you meet people. You know, sometimes you're stuck at an airport or a railway station. You encounter some, you know, strangers and you start chatting with them and you see what their life is all about. You know, you just realize okay, yeah, you thought that this was always okay for you or not good for you and how they go through these things. So basically, every human being goes through a journey in their life and uh, especially for Dean Vijay Singh, who he was and uh, where he has been pushed to, given a punishment posting and how he has given up basically and how these four boys remind him of himself when he was younger and uh, how he was also never very good at the education which was being taught, but they, but he had that knack to do the right thing as a police officer. So that's how, he, you know, he tries to restart his life, you know. He wants to give himself a god mocha that waage bar sake. So that's what was so exciting about this script. And then just the other characters played by the boys, you know, it was just a great combination working with these young boys who are straight from theater and who was who, who have a different approach towards acting. So it was, it was really exciting working on this project. It basically, I was, you know, I just was for the first time in my life in not in a very out of my comfort zone because I have always played characters which are given because according to your image. So it was always easier to play those kind of characters, but playing something like this was, was kind of tough in the beginning, but it just started flowing eventually. And you know, that's what, as you said, playing a character, because we were all so used to seeing you. They used to call you the actor with the Italian good looks back in the day, the coolest actor. And Sunny, I see Dean Vijay sing, and I'm like, whoa, that's Bobby Diol. But, you know, as you described, he's a man who's, you know, has suffered setbacks. He wants to get back. Did that somewhere also resonate with you? I mean, his journey vis-a-vis -vis your journey. Definitely. I mean... You know, every time there's an emotion which comes in play, especially in a script, in a character, you can easily relate it to a, a similar kind of emotion in your lives. And that's the experience that I've got. And luckily, a character like this, if I was given to play t t 
15 years back, I would have found it very different. I would have played it very differently and I wouldn't have got the intensity in that sense as how this character would have been able to. But it definitely, you know, every time you're emoting, there's something that triggers off that emotion, you know. So those kind of thoughts always help a char an actor while performing. And uh, definitely I'm a father of two kids and I have been through ups and downs in my life. So I know what it feels, you know, to be pushed away and then f struggle and try to find my way back. So it was kind of relatable in that sense. But do you remember what were you doing in 83? I was maybe eating a Frankie, <laughs> walking around with my friends, playing cricket and enjoying life, playing board games and things like that, playing a lot of uh, sports. I used, to be, I, used to be, I used to love playing squash and badminton and spend most of my time with my friends. So I guess those were the days when I was doing all those fun things. When you had no worries in life, you were just happy, just enjoying the age. And also, I mean, as we said, we were so all, you know, we enjoyed ourselves, but we didn't know that the city as it's uh, Bombay then, which was burning with, you know, there was the underworld and all. But I remember in your career, you've not played a gangster, done a gangster film as that. So was that also exciting, you know, this coming your way, the 80s and recreating it? Yeah, it was because, you know, uh, to play, be a part of a film which is based in, at a certain, it's, you can say it's like a period film in a, in a way because it's based yeah. in the 80s. And uh, I think I just love the idea of it and the whole, uh, the whole environment which was recreated it was so exciting because I love the 80s. I grew up in the 80s. For me, seeing the moment, like the, those days, the way people were and the way they dressed up, there was so simplicity in everything. There was, there was no uh, corruption in that sense mentally, but there were other evil people around which could easily take advantage of the normal people. And that's what was happening because that time it was the beginning of all those things. You know, it was peaking. Ga gangsters were peaking at that time the underworld and things like that. And I still remember, I, I, I have led a very sheltered life, so I was never allowed to go out of my house after six o'clock. In fact, when I was talking about going to eat a Frankie, I wasn't even given pocket money to go eat Frankie. I was supposed to come home and eat. <laughs> but those were the days where all this was happening and uh, it's always been very fascinating. Even when you watch movies, you I'm sure you've seen so much on Netflix about all the... Uh, those uh, drug de drug lords and things like that, and their lifestyles and the way they move from nothing to everything and then back to nothing. So it was always interesting, intriguing, and you always want to be, you know, you always want to see it visually, you know, rather than reading a book about it. So I think it was very exciting for me that I was going to be part of a film, Class of 83, which is going to be seen by people and they, they'll get a chance to see that period in which they have missed or the period they've grown up in because there's the young generation and the older generation who've seen it and the younger generation who've only heard little bits and pieces from here and there. So I think yeah. it's a great, great script. So what would Dean Vijay Singh tell your character Badal from Barsat if they were to meet? <laughs> he would just say, I, I want to recruit you. I want you to come and work for me. <laughs> you have the <laughs> capability. You're Badal. You, you're the mountain boy. You can climb up mountains you can climb up anything and you can fight the wrongdoers <laughs> but do you like remember that. anything any memories come back from Barsatsi because when you made your debut I remember there was an announcement in you know the dailies uh, you, you got film fair and stardust and there was a picture of you and Tina Barsat coming there was no social media no promotions then do you remember what was it like back in the day or do you feel it's easier now I think uh, I think what was nice about that period was that uh, everything was exclusive. Everything was had a charm of its own, you know. I mean, I remember those days just to get a glimpse of an actor would be so exciting, you know, because oh my God, did you? I just so lucky I was walking past here and I saw that actor and this happened and that. And now it's changed, you know. Now it is like. You have to talk about yourself all the time. Yeah. You have to keep posting on Instagram, or on Twitter, or other ways of doing it. So things have changed. That that stardom which you 
felt in those days was totally different from what it is now. But yet again, this is a new age. So this is how the new age reacts to things. And this is what is what stardom means to them if you, you're spoken about by speaking about yourself. And being seen more more than you, I mean, more than what they want to see you, just be seen all the time. So I've seen when I started my career, it was a changing times. You know, it was changing towards this system. So I never got used to that system. I never got used to this system, which is existing. So it's always been a little uh, difficult journey in that sense. So now I'm trying to cope up with social media. And I had to create a Instagram, I had to create a Twitter account because there were a lot of fake Bobby Deoles on tw Twitter especially who would write any kind of rubbish and people used to believe that it's Bobby Deoles saying all those things. So for that reason was one of the main reasons why I started it. And now obviously the, this is the new way of uh, promoting the work you do and the people are so used to seeing people's work through this. So I guess it's fun, I guess. It's the new norm for now. So you, I mean, have been a cliffhanger of sorts now. That was, that time was changing, this time is changing. But, you know, but you also do, did something which actors today will say it's rash. You took a self-imposed exile as well from acting. You gave it uh, a break. I actually uh, went through a bad time in my life those days. I uh, wasn't getting the kind of work I wanted. Then uh, I started blaming the world for that. I started uh, saying that, oh, because they don't care about me and all those silly things started pitying myself, I think, more than anything else. Mm. And obviously, alcohol come, played a bad role in my life at that point. And uh, mm -hmm. things just took me away from the reality and the honesty of what I'm supposed to be doing. Till the day when I started noticing people around me, my mother, my father, my wife, my kids, telling me, don't worry, everything will be fine. My son coming up to me and telling me, Papa, don't look sad. It's, why are you sad? Be fine. My, my wife, my dad. And, you know, but the thing is, that's when I realized, looking into their eyes, that they love me. They would want to do the world for me, but they can't. It is me who, who has to stand on his two feet and do things for myself. And that just kind of, uh, it was just like a, I just snapped and I suddenly overnight started to change myself and uh, started looking towards being more positive, trying to work at the way I was looking because I started looking like something else. And uh, I didn't want to give up. I saw my father. I'm like, there's a man like him. He should have inspired me. Why did I not let my father inspire me? He's never given up in his life. So that just kind of, when you self-realize these things, when you make your mistakes and you realize your own mistakes is when you start doing something about it. And that's exactly what happened to me. Those three years were really bad. I didn't work much. And uh, then I just started taking care of myself. And, uh, and the system had changed. Before people used to come to you for work, it became the opposite because a lot of people started entering the film industry. So there was, there was, not, you know, there was enough people to ask for work for the similar kind of work. So I started meeting people, started taking care of myself, got into fitness to another level. And uh, and that's how just things started to roll. And uh, I'm thankful and grateful to a lot of people who I met, who gave me the chance, who believed in me. And uh, and they always said, we believe in you because you believe in yourself now. You know? That's what's important. And that's the most important thing. So that's how it happened. And then obviously, it was still not so easy because I think for an actor in this industry, every day is a struggle. Yeah. You could be the biggest star or the smallest actor. Every day is a struggle to get good work, you know. So I think that will never end. And I think I've come to terms with that. And I think that keeps you going. That keeps you motivated to work harder and harder every day of your life. And uh, that's why people started noticing me. I got, I did two big films, which are, commercial, big budget, with big superstars, which helped me being noticed by the audiences because the reach of these actors is so big when the movies come out. And that's how everything gave me a push start. And then I slowly, steadily, you know, then OTD platform suddenly became so big, Netflix. So when they came to me, I guess, I'm sure they were also must be thinking twice before coming to me. But I think yeah. now they think they made the best choice. <laughs> 
that but that's how it is. Unanimous in agreement. <laughs> but that's so how it is. Right you can, is. you can only grab work. You cannot ask for work to come to you. You have to go and grab it. You have to move forward. Go for it. Rejection, no worries. Go again for it, and that's how you get work. You know, it's so interesting what you said that because the narrative around us has just gone askew. There is this backlash against people who belong to the industry versus outsiders. I mean, your father was an outsider where he came, yeah. and his struggles were manifold. What is your take yeah. on it? And you also belonging to the family you do had your own share of struggles. Yeah, so I just believe that in everybody's career, struggle will always come arise. You know, it's not just film industry; it's also in every other industry. You know, not just our yeah. industry. but the more spoken industry is is our film industry the show business there's no business like show business so people talk more about it and make make examples out of it but there are so many examples existing in our country in the different professional lives which are also going through this hardship but that doesn't mean you have to cry about it or pity yourself or give up yourself but then this is my life i know what i've experienced but every individual has a different experience and you don't know what difficulties they went through and how they couldn't face it or could face it so everybody is has i don't judge anybody how they react to the things in their lives because everybody has something that had gone right or wrong and must have affected them mentally you know so that's how it is and also you know it's been we can say it's been a 43 year long career span if i take dharam veer also into consideration <laughs> which you made your view as a yeah. child star then came barsat there was soldier there was gupt i mean you've done a wide range of roles so how did you approach these or do you feel you were just type cast as that uh, lover boy and then who bash up people also playing the antagonist in a few i guess so i guess my personality every actor has a personality and how it exudes i mean how it comes across with people and how people notice it and how people, script writers want to write thinking about this character with that actor in mind so those were the days it was happening like that but now a lot of actors are surprising writers because writers write it with someone else in mind and they get a, a different actor and they actually play the part so nicely so things have changed so much now now scripts are written and then you can still go and choose a different actor for it you know but it is always important to choose the right do the right casting no matter what but there are a lot of actors who can do they're so versatile you know they can do so many different kinds of roles nowadays and that's so nice to see that change and that's what I've been trying to work on it even now, and uh, that's why, uh, luckily, I got to play Dean Vijay Singh, and it's very different from anything I've done. So, really excited. That's awesome. And amongst your filmography, which is at the, I know they're all special to you, but which is the one that you fondly remember when you look back, or which was most challenging, and you felt that maybe, hey, this is not for me. I think Dil Lagi was always going to be the closest to my heart because I think my brother. got the best out of me as an actor he gave me an amazing role in that film the film didn't do well at box office but till date whoever sees it or talks to me about it they say we loved your performance in that the most but besides people telling me that it's my own thing which i like the most you know it's the most special to me and also a lot of heroines made their debut opposite you there was preeti there was neha yeah and you yeah, know, there I was ashwarya as well so you were the, yeah. and also now there are all <laughs> young stars making their debut so you are actually the lucky mascot I don't know. I hope I wish them luck, and uh, I hope I'm lucky for them. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, in those days, yeah, I did a lot of work with a lot of actors who starting their careers off. So I, I guess I'm kind of I understand how to interact with them and to make them feel comfortable. You know, I think uh, I remember Preeti's inter was someone I knew before she wanted to be an actor, and we used to be a group of friends. We used to move around, and she was a friend of a friend, and that's how we met. And we used to go out at for dinners or parties and things like that. But she never said she wanted to be an actor. She always said she wanted to be a criminal psychologist. And next thing I know, I'm sitting at Shekhar Kapoor's office, and there was some screen tests going on. And they said Preeti Zinta, a girl came. She was good. She was good. I said Preeti Zinta. I said, "Meko, see." So I saw a screen test, and I just signed Soldier at that time. And uh, a bus boy, a Muslim boy, were looking for a new girl. So I said, "Please check Preeti Zinta." And uh, I don't say that I got her the role. But I think it was. her capabilities that got her the role but at least uh, i brought her to their notice at that point thank you so much for talking to us and lastly what advice would you give your 20 year old self today in retrospect don't take life so easily enjoy but be uh, 
discipline. Discipline is the most important thing. That will make your life very easy. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you more. Uh, you know, play more roles like uh, Dean Vijay Singh. He totally, you know, has nailed it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. You too. Thank bye bye. You. Bye. Bye.